Hey guys, how you doing? Joe here. I'm out in the woods solo today. Nobody with me, no dog this time. Uh, a couple reasons why. I want to do a minimalist camp overnight. I'm going to build a super shelter and it's very damp and wet and it's supposed to rain. I didn't want to put the dog through that. So we're here by ourselves. We got just the Hidden Woodsman Day Ruck on our back. It's a 20 liter because some stuff lashed to the outside. I've got to find an area with a lot of resources because I need to build quite a bit. We have a lot of work to do before the sun goes down tonight, so let's get to it. Squirrel tracks. There. 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 Over there. They dug something up right there. Pretty cool. Alright, I'm getting back into these spruces. I'm hoping there's something something useful back in here, building material wise. Been walking for some time. I'm definitely far in enough where I can set up and be comfortable. Ah. Hmm. Look at here. Look at here. If we get over here a bit, it seems to be a little bit more dense with spruce trees. I like this general area. I just want to make sure that I'm not missing out on something even better right around the corner. So, while I don't want to take too much time in finding a spot, I also want to make sure I make the right decision. I'm getting pretty warm. It's probably plus one right now. It's gonna stay around that until tonight where it goes to negative three Celsius. So, the extreme cold isn't the issue today. The issue today is staying dry and not overheating and sweating and stuff. Cause that's just as dangerous for at night. Ah, oh, now that I got all that stuff off, I'm gonna do a little quick walk around and make sure that this is the actual spot I wanna be at. Well, it turns out this spot is hot on the resources. There's no reason not to use it. I'm pretty sheltered underneath here. There's no wind coming in here. There's a lot of um, trees that I can use. So I am gonna pick this spot, it's not so bad. I actually wanna put this exact spot right here for my shelter. Uh, it's a little uneven, but that's okay part of the shelter making process to make it all even so yeah let's get to it hear the birds anyway we got some snow melted away compared to the last video I shot it's almost up to my knees and I'm not as far north as I was in that video too so a couple things going for us here yeah, facing that way, fire in front, should be good. I wanna hang my backpack on this tree here so that it's easy access for me. Also, because I have this wool blanket that I'm gonna be using for warmth today and I don't wanna lay it on the snow, this is, it's not cold enough where the snow will just brush off, it'll stick and get it wet. Um, I got my saw rolled up in my blanket. Let's see if I can just slide it out. Actually, even easier, just slide it right over there. So we will be using a saw and our axe for a lot of the work today. Might as well pop those right out right now. In order to not lose my wool blanket, gotta be a little gentle with her. Got to even warmer on the, I had more clothes on the, on, in on the way in, it got warm, I had to take that off too. Ah. Okay. So we are looking for wrist thick pieces of wood standing, probably spruce, because then I can use it two times. 
I see a couple here. We should be able to get everything right from this general vicinity. I want to leave them intact until I go over the, get over the shelter uh, spot so that I can use all of the pieces of wood and the boughs and stuff without having to come back for them. I don't know what's easier, <laughs> but this is what I'm doing. Got a good start on my poles as you can see. Next start, next step before uh, I collect any more or do anything is to measure how tall I want them, how, how long I want the poles. That way I might be able to get two sec two poles out of one section of log. Um, I did get I did get this dead one. It had been the top had been broken off, so it's a good start. Um, I do want it longer than I am or taller than I am because of the way the shelter is going to be. So I'm gonna make it a couple feet longer than it has to be. So I'm here, I'm gonna go at least up to here for the bed. So I have enough room in there. Okay. So, uh, that's a good two feet taller than I am. That should be perfect. That is perfect because that piece that I just cut is nearly that tall anyway. So I'm getting two pieces out of, out of that first piece, which is great. Less trees I have to take down, less work, less impact, the better. I am allowed to be here doing this, just in case anyone's concerned, full permission do all of this stuff here. So we got to clear these off real flush because I don't want to be getting poked while I'm sleeping. No one wants to get poked while they're sleeping, right? <laughs> it is warm. Everything's wet. My gloves are soaked already. I'm glad I didn't bring the dog. It would have been a battle keep him dry and then warm at night because he ain't coming in this super shelter with me. That would not work out. One down. A hundred more to go. <laughs> Only have one Nalgene full of water. I will have to melt some snow later on, but that's future Joe's problem. I'll go through all my gear, what I have to make the super shelter with me and stuff. As far as gear, there's not much in here. Got some food, but I got a big space blanket and some plastic sheeting for the for the front of it and some paracord. Uh, 
no sleeping pad. We'll have to use uh, spruce boughs. Vitamins! All I can smell is the spruce needles and it reminds me of vitamin C. The vitamin C. Right how? Right how? Those are going to be used for my mattress themselves. Six. Sven. No. Oh man, it's a nice day out. I'm working up an appetite and a sweat. Clementine season. Gotta love a clementine in the winter, right? Not to be confused with a tangerine. Oh man. Well, thank you very much for all the support lately for, for the big views on my last couple of videos. I really appreciate that. I really. I do notice when the winter time comes around, there's more viewers on my channel at least, which is good. I've made most of my big videos in the winter time, actually probably all of them. I think it's something about seeing someone out in the woods in the winter time, staying warm, that appeals to people. They don't actually have to get up and do it themselves. A lot of vicarious camping and a lot of um. 
gumption to go out. Uh, I can't think of the word, but initiative to go out as well, which is even cooler. Tripper's really bummed out at home, but it's just not the day for him out here. Oh, I see a squirrel. You want some clementine, bro? He ran up a tree. He was right above me. Buddy, what are you doing? You gonna jump? Oh, squirrel man. All right, good snack. Back to work. So we gotta lay this out make sure it's all gonna work out make sure I have enough poles and all that I have nine poles like you saw um, yeah let's get to it these are gonna be for the bottom to level it out but four short ones as opposed to two long ones it stops it from rocking so much Cross like this. Two. Up on here. These are kind of flat too. It's, it's actually really helpful that they're not very cir circular. They're more oval, so they are going to lay quite flat. And those aren't going to get tied on. Those are just to prop it. That way, I can move it later on if I have to. Hopefully, we won't have to do that. Oops. Okay, so we've got some height already. We need, you know what, I didn't even think about that. We need sideways poles, and I don't want to cut my, my good poles in half. Let's, let's figure out how many poles we're going to need first, because some of them can be used uh, to cut in half if I have enough. So let's say I use this in half. So there's two there. I'm not going to use that just, just for just for placement. Just for now. Two there. Let's check it out. Can you guys see everything? I want to make sure you guys can see what I'm doing here. So it won't be that long. But those are there. Or pretend I got another one up another one up and that's not high enough yet I don't think I'll do one more one more row so this can pre pretend this is cut in half and that's there and this is cut in half and here This one as our top. I believe that's going to be plenty high. Yeah, that's perfect. 
I want to be able to sit like a like a chair. Look at me, have a chair. Yeah. Legs are out of L and 90 degrees. This is comfortable. Okay, so we can't afford to cut some of these. So we'll figure out what ones we want to cut. Probably the smaller ones, I would assume. Let's get this off here. Actually, there's some wampus ones that aren't very straight. Maybe we'll cut those ones. We'll cut this one here and see where we're at. Measure. That's plenty wide for me to lay down, like uh, width-wise, definitely wide enough. So we do want a little bit of an overhang. Cut it there. Will that be half? We'll just might as well cut it right in half. Excuse me. Right about there. See how good my eyeballing skills are. Oh, about two inches off. Not so bad. That's there. All right. Now that's there. Done. Next two poles. Go here. And here. All right. And we'll cut another one. This one. Do you think I got better or worse? Oh, worse. Three inches off. <laughs> That there, and that there. Slowly coming together, guys. Now all we need is two on top. Was that all I said, or did we do another one? Three deep, right? Let's see how it is with the sitting. Yeah, that's fine. That's just as high as I need to go right there. This bigger one on the front, because that's where I'll be sitting mainly, in front of my fire before I lay down. Boom. Bam, son. We do need a couple cross pieces, at least one cross piece um, for my legs, and then to support the bed itself. So that's where this will come into handy. We can use this. Three quarters of the way down, it'll go under my, underneath my knees, as per Morris Kahansky's suggestion. So... That looks good there. As these gloves get more, more and more wet, they get harder and harder to put back on, but dealing with the camera, I have to take them off quite often. First world problems, I know, I know. So it goes there, maybe a little bit up. And then, we can probably put another one through. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see how it goes, how it feels on my back. Might as well put two there, but no, that's going to not feel good. We'll put another one down here near my feet. That'll be fine. Okay, so we got to lash them all on now. I do want to make sure it's somewhat level. It looks pretty good, and once I get my bed on there, it'll, it'll be even sturdier and more level. -er. pretty awesome that's pretty awesome okay let's get this tied up I get my paracord out of my backpack we don't want the very bottom tied on like I said we don't want the the, the, the placement logs the, the the port logs tied on we want all the bed pieces tied on there it does matter how you go through the knot with the running end on the on the 
uh, Canadian jam knot. Sometimes I mess up still. But if you do, you just take it out and do it again. It needs to constrict. There, we did it right this time, which is good. Oh, see, that's the problem. I don't want everything sliding around either. Ah. Getting all wet kneeling down on this ground here. Come on, this twig is messing with me. Oh my gosh. There we go. Okay. Those two are not on tight yet. What is happening? There we go, we gotta tuck, we gotta pull it this way. Okay, she's on. I do wanna tighten it as tight as possible, so I am gonna use that silly toggle dealio. Hope this is all in frame for you guys. Okay, that's tight. So now I'm confident with how tight that's on together. And that's this one and this one, but I can just cut the line and go on to the next one. On to the next one, on to the next one. So now I'm going to tie this to this. This one to this one. I might tie the, the rest of it a different way, I'm not sure. We'll see. We'll see if I tie it all together or not. I'll tell you, regardless of what I decide to do. I've never made a super shelter in this fashion before. I've made the beds, definitely, and I've made super shelters before. But this is like a, this is a Morse Kahansky special. It's like a movable, and, and I could have left the, the, the top log, if I did plan on like moving it, like a trebuchet, I think the word is. Maybe I'm wrong with that. But you could have left, I could have left the, the top poles longer as handles. But I don't plan on moving it far, if at all. It's just, it is movable, is the point. Did I break it? <laughs> okay, I think this one side is gonna be done. Yes. All right, that's solid, eh? It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Let's just try tying them all together at once and see what happens. This might work just fine, I don't know. It's all part of learning. Okay, my toggle. Lost my toggle. There she is. I'm gonna say that that's totally fine. There's no difference on either side. Okay, that's how it's gonna go from now on. Look at that, eh? Oh, I shouldn't be doing that. The other side's rolling around. All right, check it out. Everything's solid. Got the middle piece on. I'll learn something new every day. Huh? I don't have to tie every piece individually. It's all good to just wrap it once around. Can you jam that? Like, can't hear the tension but it's, it's taut it's very tight tight toit on there um, so yeah basically the bed is done the framework at least solid but the shelter is nowhere near com completed and then as soon as the shelter is done what makes this shelter work is firewood firewood enough to last the whole night and um, it's 11.30 now, so a couple hours to do just this, and I do need to get f tons of firewood. It gets dark at around five, so we gotta keep going. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is go get some saplings, 
because I have to weave them and make an arch over top of my head. You'll see what I'm talking about. As for my bed itself, the um, maybe I'll do this first so it gets off the snow. The tops of the trees, the tops of the spruces that I use for this, I can use for my bed. Get my gloves on. My gloves on. Probably gonna get a sweater on too, chilling down a bit. I haven't been doing too much heavy work, just tying all this on and flapping my gums. Oh, they're wet. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that is looking good. Been doing some thinking, been doing some uh, stuffing of the boughs. I think what I'll do, because it doesn't seem like there's enough, th there might be enough buoyancy up here, enough of loft to keep me up, but, but it, I don't think so. Um, and I want to cut down on some of the, 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 the diameter of these, um, these poles. Because again, I don't have a sleeping pad, and sleeping on things that round is not going to be very comfortable. So what I'm going to do is cut the ends down so they're not all jabbing me. It's more comfortable to sleep, and I'll take some of the saplings that I'm going to get for my my roof and everything, and I'll cut them and I'll slide them underneath this between up here and then the, the pole behind my knees. So I'll have a little bit more spring, a little bit more uh, loft, and I won't feel like I'm going to fall right through this which I might be able to be fine like this we'll see but I think I will have to stuff some saplings in there all right and these kind of need to be pushed down into each other as well I'm trying to make myself as comfortable as possible while still saving myself enough time to get firewood because that is an integral part of this. I want to lay down on it and see. No. No, I'm going to fall through it. Yeah, okay. Well, that's what I'll do then. Get some saplings, weave them down in there. It'll be fine. I've done that before. It's worked. I'm sure there's a better way to do this, but I'm just... I'm trying to hurry up a bit. All right. So we'll go get some saplings now and worry about the bed later on. Uh, filling in the bed, that is. I saw out here when I was walking around, here's my tracks, trying to find a good spot. I saw a clump of um, saplings that will be very helpful for me. Just looking for things like this, really, with a wispy end. The wispy end. That's a potential I can, potentially I can grab that one, but I wanna go find the, the clump of them. So here they are. I just hope that they're not dead. I have not approached them yet to see. If they are, we won't be able to use them. Oh, that one's good. Okay, might have some good ones here. Some good firewood over here too, actually. Should probably grab it before I just leave it. I can come back for it. Snow in my glove. That's fun. Some great fire starter right there. All right, now to check these out. Done, done. No good. 
Okay, this one's good. Okay, one. Two. I'm not going to count. I'm not going to say everyone. I'm going to just keep counting. That would be silly. We already did that in this video. Three. <laughs> this is a good one here. <sighs> okay. Got a few. I'm going to need a bunch more. All these are good ones. I only brought back the live ones this trip. I'm going back right now to go get all that firewood. Whew. All right, I'm back. Got three more good saplings to add to those. And I got my firewood here. And I need a drink of water. Woo, buddy. Oh man. very wet everywhere I brought a change of socks that's the only clothes I brought extra other than what I'm wearing or wore in yeah it was definitely the right decision not to bring tripper that and I haven't stopped working since I got here he would have been very bored it probably would have made things a little bit more difficult <laughs> Just a little. All right. Keep on going. We got uh, 1230 now. 1230. Having these saplings here is big. I gotta start weaving them. This is gonna be, the, I think this is gonna be the most difficult part of the whole, whole shelter building process. Weaving the saplings into each other. All right. Stuff out of the way. I guess I gotta start by seeing what are my longest and what are my most sturdy pieces. These um, this unknown saplings, the ones I was getting, uh, uh, though you saw me get, is a little bit. It seems to be a little bit brittle on the brittle side show you what I'm doing here on the other side. I'm just trying to see if it'll work at first. There goes my camera. I think this is going to take a lot of tweaking. Be careful not to snap it. So that's all right. That's all right. Cool, okay, we're on, the, we're on a roll. These other ones, I've got maple, birch, and another maple. But let's stick with these, this unknown wood. I'll grab this thick one, maybe this one here. Pardon my sniffling. Okay, let's set the camera up and show you what I'm doing here. So under here, in between here, I wanna stick this sapling. It's kind of hard to see because of the boughs. But it's going to go in oh, the first one and then propped, propped in there. That's how it's going to stay in place without being jabbed into the ground or using any kind of cordage. It's all going to be on itself. So that's how it becomes movable as well. Okay, that looks pretty good. It's pretty high. I, I can afford to bring it down some. I hope this is in frame. Might not be. At the risk of it not being in frame, I'm gonna let this go and fix my camera. It's in there. I don't wanna, I really just,
just have to be careful this is the whole thing. I don't want to snap these. And you can use cordage to tie these together, but if I can get away without it, I will by kind of just wrapping the saplings around each other carefully enough. Oh, yeah, see, I heard a crack there. I do want to make sure this is tall enough for me. Oh, yeah, plenty tall. Oh, man, I'm scared I'm going to break it. Great success. Bam. If I can get around one more time, I'll feel very confident. Oh, there she goes, boys and girls. That is cool. That is cool. Look at that. Snap. Oh, snap. No peasant life tonight. We're going to stay warm. We're going to stay warm. All right, um, this is going to take a lot of tweaking, I'm sure, but we are on the right path. Look at that. I'm, I'm stoked. Stoked. I should do the Birdman hand rub some more. Look at that. Plenty of height to sit up in the front. So i got to put uh, one in the back a little bit smaller to kind of make, have it like a come down, and then one in the front that comes out a little bit forward here and then some on the back coming up from the back. But seeing how that worked, I am I am very excited. And see seeing how easily that worked is a good sign. gentle on them. Apparently the ends, the little wispy ends here add a lot of strength. That's why you leave them on. Oh man, I am very, very happy with this. You can see that, right? It's coming through. <laughs> now to get the front part on and then start adding the space blanket and the, uh, the roofing material. Pretty symmetrical too. This is the hardest that I thought was gonna be the hardest part. So, bonus. I have stopped building this for a, for a minute. I had a granola bar. I made up some stakes because I do need to make a fire reflector in front. So before I continue to build on my shelter, just to break up the shelter building process for myself, I'm gonna start on the fire reflector. Just pound the stakes in, get the distance, and then um, I have to get a couple more saplings because I do need to make more of a ridge. Uh, rib work and then I have to get the top part on Then I have to build the bed up and then I have to collect firewood and then finish the fire reflector It's one o'clock. We're doing all right. We're doing all right. It's non-stop, but that's okay So I do need some some saplings like I said for the top and then also for underneath here to put it underneath maybe five and They don't have to be long at all. They only have to be this long so I can get two or three out of each sapling Not a big deal but this man, let me show you. I'll bring you in here a little bit and show you the uh, the basket weave of this shelter. <laughs> Look at that. It all just holds itself together. Pretty cool. And also, if you were making this stationary, you could pound stakes in uh, to hold the bed in place, and you wouldn't even have to use paracord uh, tying the bed together. So it could be paracordless. And how you attach the um, tarp and everything to the to the shelter 
you don't have to use paracord either, and I'll show you that in a little bit. Okay, keep going, Joe. Keep going. So experience shows me that you need a big step away from the super shelter to start the fire. So I'm gonna go even a little bit farther than that. Right about there, a big step in a little bit. Stick that into place. Because depending on how big, excuse me, depending on how big your logs are, I will try to get some rotten logs off the ground, some bigger ones, so. Yeah, that's still, it's still gonna be closer. I'm gonna put this secondary stick behind because then that back wall will start to catch too sometimes, so. Yeah, boom, back wall fire here. That works to me. That looks good to me. There and there. I hope the ground's not too frozen right now. Yeah, about there. Right there. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What'd that ground do? There we go. Should have champered the ends, they're gonna mushroom out. I should do that still. Shoot, shoot, shoot. <laughs> no good. Now, if you watch my videos in the past, you know I do normally chamfer the ends on top of these. Again, I am uh, stretched for time. Not doing well for time. I don't. Even if I'm doing well, I'm kind of feel rushed. I'm not having a proper sleeping bag or sleeping pad will do that to you in the winter time. Anyways, I can tie these together after the logs are in there, and they'll be solid enough. It'll be fine. The whole thing's gonna catch on fire, anyways. I know it. Okay. Cool. Sticking in the longer parts of the saplings underneath and using the top parts for weaving into my bed or into my, my shelter rather. Works pretty good. Utilize both parts of the sapling for the better purpose than than just using the uh, the full full sapling for this and then cutting a another piece for underneath. Pretty all together. I'm gonna get a roof on there now. Oh, actually, I have one more uh, one more piece to go on the bottom, and then I guess I'll use the top for the lashing too. It only makes sense, right? So I've got two in there so far. I think that's all I'll need, plus this will be plenty. I'm putting them at the top, right underneath the boughs, and then on the top of the, the knee log halfway down. Okay, one last piece to go. I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. Pretty pleased. That's what I got for dinner. Some Australian lamb ribs. A rack of lamb. If I ever get this shelter built, I can make a fire and cook those up.
<laughs> All right, this is my, ooh, I got a thermometer too. What does it say? Plus five in my backpack. Let's hang this up. Let's hang this up. There we go. This is my piece de resistance. I've never used one of these things ever. I saw it at Canadian Tire yesterday. Yep, another Canadian Tire reference. And I grabbed it. It really stinks. But anyways, should uh, should help things out, I think. It's a little bit more durable. Has some grommets. I don't know that it's any bigger. I thought it was going to be much bigger. Maybe a little bit than a normal one. I'm not even sure if this is the same kind of mylar, if it will work the same or not. We shall see, I guess. So this is the reflective, reflective side in, supposed to reflect even more heat onto me. Lots of spostas. Shantytown? Shantytown. Anyway, still got lots to put on. That's just the first cover. Got to get the plastic on here too. I'm kind of concerned about the little pokies coming through. We shall see. If I can clean them all up, but I don't want to create extra pokies by doing that. Pokies being the scientific term. I can tie that down now, huh? Huh? Look at that, moving up in the world, Joe. There we go. Plastic drop sheet. Two of them, just in case. But you can see, this, with these, I might only need one, and then the SOL bivy, or uh, space blanket, and paracord, and tools are the only things I brought to make this big, big shelter. You could really do this with, an, with like, uh, you don't even need to use a saw, you can use an ax for it all. This and this, potentially. That's a lot, that's not a lot to keep warm uh, in the winter. And then these get down. You can with the right amount of firewood, negative forty for sure. You're up all night soaking that fire, but you wouldn't even need a sleeping bag in there. It's not a fun time. Don't get me wrong. It's doable. It's doable. All right. Let's see how just how big this is. We'll have enough coverage or not. It's like trying to open a plastic garbage bag. Oh, she's big. Oh, that's pretty, feels kind of durable too. That's a good thing. All right. Try not to rip this. Oh, buddy, looks like we are golden. Okay, so you only need one of those, which is even better. And I'll show you exactly what that is. Uh, from Canadian Tire, mind you. Protective plastic drop sheet, heavyweight, industrial. 2.40 meters by 3.60 meters, eight feet by, or eight feet by 12 feet. Uh, I don't know how thick it is. I imagine three mil. Anyway, that's what it looks like. Mr. Squirrel's back. Yeah, this is perfect. This is a perfect size for this. Super stoked on this. I can even... Oh, I don't want to rip it! I gotta get some pegs made and peg this up. The wind, of course, the wind will kick up as soon as this happens.
Okay, that's basically what I want. I do want some loose at the bottom so I can roll a log around and keep it down flat, but I gotta get this up and pinned to here or else it's just gonna be the bane of my existence. Okay, to make these pins, I keep talking about, make a notch in the wood, and I gotta split it off the side. Ah, piss. All right, to make these uh, pins I keep talking about, piece of wood, this is birch. You make a little notch in between, in the middle. Then you wanna break it, not in the middle. You don't wanna use your thumbs to break it in the middle, off to the side of that cut. So, one, two. Now, you have potentially a pin. See how it's working? Um, mm, should pinch it. I'll show you on here, it should work on here. Just say I wanna connect it to there, which I do. Should be able to use this pin. There, see it's on? Now it's holding that. That's not gonna come off at all. That's on there. I just gotta make a bunch of those now. Like a whole bunch. That's how that works. Again, Morse Kahansky. Bam, son. Wind needs to hold on until I get my pegs on. Wind needs to hold on until I get my pegs on. Original screenplay. Come on, here we go. Is that in the frame? I hope so. Oh, I broke that one. Yeah, I broke that one. I went a little bit too far on that one. Nope, won't work. Okay, okay, looking good. <laughs> this is looking awesome, man. Okay, okay, looking pretty good. Here needs some work. Underneath, here it's not covered, and this side is probably not the greatest. But we can fix all that with a tarp. We brought an extra tarp. So we've got pegs up there and there holding it in place. This guy's tied off. Probably pull this in a bit more here. Peg it there. I'll peg this here or tie it somewhat just to get it on there. And this is all going to be blocked off by tarp. Um, and on, on the bottom too where, where it's not uh, touching. But. That's pretty good there, nice and tight. <laughs> pretty narrow, but that's what I want. I only want it as wide as I am. It's got a good, it's got a good look to it. All right, I'm happy with how tight everything is. Tightened up everything on the back. Let's get this pulled up because we're not gonna have this down until we go to sleep, right? To keep warm in there. Let's pull this up. For anyone who doesn't know what a super shelter is or how it works, you basically build the fire in the front, it radiates through the, the, the clear plastic, and you make the, the back airtight. It's going to be airtight with that tarp, like I keep saying. And the, it just radiates through. The heat radiates through. You stay warm in there. That, that mylar blanket in there is going to help uh, bake me in there, basically. Yeah, that's it. Super, uh, super shelter. Anyways, there's, there's been lots of videos on it. Morris Kahansky did lots of um classes on it and things like that so again credit to him if you don't know who he is i highly suggest checking him out
Okay. Sit like that. I do got to get that back on, but that's the least of my worries right now. That's that just all that will take is draping the tarp over top of it. I can even do that later on. I'm done basically my shelter. Um, with the exception of the tarp, I have to get a bunch of boughs now. So that's going to be what I spend all this a lot of time on now. Um, it's two o'clock. Yeah, so let's see how how well that that those those uh, maples will keep me up. I haven't tested it since I put those pieces in there, the saplings. Oh, it's it's much more buoyant, <laughs> more lofty. It's got a lot of spring to it, which is good. You don't want these big, heavy logs in the middle. Anyways, that's really good for for loft and to keep me from falling through. I'm fine with that. Now I just gotta gather a ton of boughs and stick them in here um, as much as I can. I won't worry so much about my feet area down here as as my knees and up um, because it will be very, very hot coming in through the, uh, the, the heat will be coming in through the, through the screen, through the plastic. All right, and then, yeah, sit here, have the fire right in front, nice and comfortable. This isn't as far front as I wanted. Maybe next time if I make another one, I'll, uh, I'll work on that being better, but I'm totally happy with the way it is now. No rain. Blind melon.